Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. An exhaustive inquest into the deaths of four frontline workers who took their own lives has come to an end. The coroner's report, a wake-up call for Tasmania police to improve its supports and ensure history isn't repeated. What started as a passion gradually turned too much to bear for four police officers who died by suicide between 2016 and 2020. This is a really difficult time for those four families and for the colleagues of those officers. A coroner delivering the long-awaited findings into an inquest examining the deaths of Paul Hunt, Paul Reynolds, Robert Cook and Simon Dark, three of them linked to systemic failures within the organisation. Police officers, um, by the nature of the job, are exposed to some pretty uh, difficult uh, and extraordinary circumstances, so uh, providing that support is important. Coroner Simon Cooper outlining a list of recommendations hope to change the trajectory, including the implementation of a fatigue management policy, as well as mandatory six-monthly will being screening of all officers for post-traumatic stress disorder. The coroner also suggesting Tasmania police investigate the feasibility of a point system whereby officers assigned the most traumatic jobs will be automatically referred to a psychologist. The commissioner claiming change has already begun. Our strategies are in place to ensure that we mitigate the cumulative effects of stress. Um, we've also got a very strong peer support group and a critical stress um, program. We've been supporting them with budgetary um, allocations to uh, Tasmania Police and DPFEM's nation-leading wellbeing uh, support program. Robert Cook's mother Lynn and sister Michelle were in court for the inquest's final phase and have since expressed their satisfaction with the outcome, stating the family will miss Rob terribly and hope the findings and increased support for mental health may prevent similar events in the future. A shared sentiment by all donning blue and white. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. And if this story caused distress, you can contact Lifeline on 13 11 14. A 25-year-old woman has died after a single vehicle crash at La Trobe last night. Police and emergency services were called to Moriarty Road at 9pm. Initial investigations suggest the black BMW lost control while travelling west. Anyone with information or dash cam footage is urged to call police on 131 4. Ten people have now been charged as a result of referrals from the Commission of Inquiry into child sexual abuse in institutional settings. It comes just a day after the eight-volume report was handed to the Governor. Today, the Tasmanian community came together to acknowledge the work of the Commission. Ribbons of reflection and hope. It's a whole Tasmanian community. It's not just one cohort of people, it's all our children forever. A community united, standing arm in arm, together in solidarity, calling for change and transparency to mark the end of the Commission of Inquiry into Child Sexual Abuse. Change. It's as simple as that. I don't want to see the government drag their feet and act like this isn't a matter of urgency when it really is. And that there's 191, the government's got a big job to do and I just hope that they remunerate it and actually get the ball rolling really, really quickly. A sea of colour filling Launceston Civic Square as survivor advocates bravely used their voices. I feel very empowered though now that it's done. I feel like my voice has been heard which is really rewarding. A bit overwhelmed. <laughs> um, it's a big day. I think it's been a big week though for everybody. Refusing to stay silent. I feel like if we're loud enough they can't ignore us. Every time victim survivors have to retell their story it comes at a cost. Today was a moment to acknowledge the trauma grief, anger and long-lasting hurt. People do care, people do want action and people are willing to play their part. And ensure history doesn't repeat itself. It is on every single person who has a child, loves a child, knows a child or has been a child. They need to take this really seriously. Victoria Easto, 7 Tasmania News. The state government is facing pressure to get a new pay and conditions deal finalised with nurses. The union says it's ready to make an agreement, saying its members want to get back to helping bolster the state's fragile health system. 
For the Nursing and Midwifery Federation, the journey to the next state election has begun. The union hosting Labour's leader and health spokesperson at its monthly council meeting, leaving them in no doubt about the prescription needed. We absolutely want firm commitments that we will be able to fill vacant positions. The opposition has been on a health policy blitz in recent months. Despite low unemployment and economic concerns, Labour is confident it can deliver on its lofty promises. We'll work closely to, out, to work through our policies uh, with the respective unions when it comes to health. So of course Labor sacked nurses and we've been employing more nurses. The government also in the Federation sites. They claim pay negotiations have stalled after the wording of an initial offer put to staff didn't match their discussions. It was very different to what was discussed at the negotiating table to what was presented to members. But the Department of Premier and Cabinet says it received questions, clarifications and alternative ideas, all of which are being considered. The unions say time is being wasted. We would absolutely much prefer, and I'm sure our members would too, be spending their time and energy focusing on the challenges in the health sector. We want to get a, a pay deal that's mutually agreeable as well. That's why those negotiations are continuing in a productive way. Industrial action still off the table for now. John Hunt, 7 Tasmanian News. Ray Murrahi, the steward behind the independent inquiry into racing in Tasmania, has asked for more time to report his findings due to the volume of information he has received. Time indicates there are some challenges here with their investigator accessing information that they need. That suggests that he might need more resources and support from the government to make sure this work can be done. We want uh, the whole racing community, uh, whether that's the public, punters or participants, uh, having their say uh, because we want to get this moment right uh, so that we can set racing up for a bright future. An interim report is expected to be released for public consultation in coming weeks. More than 70 new police officers will hit the beat across Tasmania from Monday after graduating from the academy this morning. The Premier joining family and friends at the time-honoured ceremony to welcome the group into their new jobs. The class will be posted at stations across the state with many of them ready to go on patrol. No day will ever be the same. Um, every shift you have is going to be different, uh, so I think it'll never be boring for me. It's just something that I wanted to do and I wanted to uh, prove to my children that no matter what you put your heart to and your soul to, it's you know something that you can achieve. It's the largest graduating class on record. The Civil Contractors Federation is taking action to protect road workers on the job. Its new Speed is Our Safety Awareness campaign, a desperate plea for motorists to slow down and comply with road signs. It comes just two days after a traffic controller was struck and killed in Melbourne. Daily on our sites we have new misses. Um, they might not be as serious as someone getting clipped by a car or something happened like that but we have people hit their brakes and slam and come right up to us. We're out there every day building safer roads for Tasmanians and we deserve to be safe. We want our workers to get home safe to their families. The initiative has been supported by $150,000 of taxpayers money. Launceston Council's bid to lower speeds on several busy roads has been given the tick of approval by the State Transport Commissioner and will be rolled out in the September school holidays. Drivers will see reductions from 50 to 40 kilometres an hour around the CBD and Mowbray and Kings Meadow shopping centres. Speeds on other major thoroughfares including Bathurst and Wellington streets will drop from 60 to 50 kilometres an hour. Questions remain about the future of the Glenorchy War Memorial Pool after Council announced it would remain closed for summer. Seven Tasmanian Nightly News has taken a look inside the ageing facility as community criticism continues. The much-loved pool, a current of emotions for the community. My kids used to go there when they were little and so did I and we learned to swim there. To fix it up yeah. and develop it so, it's, as I say, so we get something out of it. Glenorchy City Council plunged in the deep end to revive the space following major safety concerns as its summer closure draws closer. We know that that is difficult for the community to hear. Um, public safety has to be our number one priority and now we're just committed to getting on with the job. The facility was built in the 1960s, already outliving its life expectancy by 20 years. 
But major cracks and breaks in the concrete and change rooms are causing strife, and particularly the ancient switchboard and pool. Leaking 35,000 litres of water per day, uh, and that's partly because the expansion joints in the pool are um, leaking, but also because of uh, the pipework. An estimates report concluded replacement would cost $30 million. We need to be considering not only the cost of replacing the facility and constructing a new pool, but the cost to operate and maintain and depreciate the asset over the life of a new pool. Both state and federal governments have been asked for a lifeline to keep it afloat. The state can play a role from time to time and we'll certainly be looking to work with the council to ensure that they've got um, you know, best possible information about uh, their future needs. The feasibility study will take about nine months. Council will then weigh up the overall cost of the project and feedback from community consultation. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. Well, one of the state's most offbeat festivals is set to return next month as the Unconformity Festival returns to Queenstown, bringing thousands with it. Its last edition in 2021 was cancelled on day one following a snap lockdown across southern Tasmania. Organisers promising a weird and wacky program of events. We're resounding the, the siren that used to go from the Mount Lyle mine in, that finished in the 1980s. Um, we've got an installation with a seven metre diameter moon. 80% of the events will be free to attend. Exhausted Year 12 students have stumbled across the finishing line after a gruelling 24-hour challenge. St Patrick's College marking its 15th lap it up, pupils pushing themselves to the limit for a good cause. Determination, I would say, was the, it was the main drive and knowing that I'm not just here for myself uh, and that, you know, I'll look back on this experience and I won't be thinking, oh, I was tired. Just kind of keeping each other accountable, keeping the energy high, just doing it with friends has helped a lot. The cohort smashing its target, raising more than $23,000 for local charities and international aid. An eight-year-old girl from Kingston with a rare genetic disorder has been granted an unforgettable wish to experience a rainbow umbrella world. Roxy's favourite toy is a rainbow umbrella, so Make-A-Wish flew her from Tasmania to visit a Queensland ginger factory. The Rainbrella project at Yandina's ginger factory is enough to brighten anyone's day, but for Roxy, it was like a dream come true. Roxy's had a rainbow umbrella since she was little, about two maybe, and it's been her favourite, favourite object, favourite thing. The eight-year-old was born with Milodica lysencephaly, which causes seizures and muscle stiffness. When her mum saw a friend's post about the art installation on Facebook, she knew it would be perfect for Roxy. And said, oh my God, I've got to get Roxy there. Make-A-Wish whisked the family away from Hobart to the Sunshine Coast, where they met the artist and spent a day under the rainbow. I will never forget today. I will never forget what an incredible experience, what a beautiful child Roxy is, how happy and gorgeous she is. We've had the train ride, we've been out on the boat, we had yummy cake. It's been all about colour, rainbow and sunshine for Roxy today. A trip filled with joy that will never be forgotten. Knowing that she loved it as much as I thought that she would and for all of us to be here, the five of us to be here together, to experience that with her, yeah, means everything. Hataya Gripsky, 7 News. Tasmania zookeepers are being kept busy as they welcome more animals to the popular attraction. Eight African wild dogs have arrived from Western Australia, settling in quickly to their new enclosure. These newest additions to Tasmania Zoo getting to know their surroundings after arriving fresh off the plane just yesterday. We've got eight African wild dogs that have just arrived from Perth Zoo, so they're a big um, family pack. They're getting along real well and settling in nicely for us. While in the canine biological family, the animals aren't related to domestic dogs, evolving from a different pathway from wolves. The zoo is already home to two of the dogs, but you won't be seeing the packs interacting with each other. Different packs won't get along. They're completely different families. If they saw another African wild dog or a different pack, they'd attack each other. In the wild, these animals chase their prey, running up to 66 kilometres an hour for 10 to 20 minutes to get their feed. Dinner time here at the zoo is somewhat easier. This afternoon was the first feeding session for the pack since arriving, with wallaby on the menu. 
the all-female grouping proving girl power is king. Girls in charge in the wild um, and the males have to do what they're told, just like real life, I guess. Tasmania Zoo received the group from Perth Zoo as part of its larger breeding program. The species are listed as endangered with only 6,000 dogs left in the wild. By us taking them on, we'll actually free up space for Perth to be able to breed again. Mark Zeta, 7 Tasmania News. King of Aaron Clarence will be playing for more than just the four points in the TSL this weekend. The two will also square off for the Gnomsky Rewalt Cup, helping raise funds and awareness for bone marrow failure. The Tigers are undefeated since June 17, while Clarence has won five of their last seven. We'll be able to pick a few things out in regards to, to Kingborough and, and hopefully get to play them again at some stage this year. That's that's the goal. I just think that gives you a good grounding um, into what finals footy is going to look like. You know, high pressure, the, the stakes are high. First bounce is at 2pm tomorrow at the Twin Ovals. Signet is just one win away from a fourth SFL grand final in a row, but must beat undefeated Huonville tomorrow to get there. The Port are confident they can end the Lions' winning run with both expecting a fierce battle. They've got that um, you know, extra pressure on them as well, but um, we just want to nullify a couple of things about them, but also focus on us. And Two teams that like to try and win the contest, and um, it's always physical with Signet, and being a final, that'll just go up another level, I think. In the SFLW, King Row will be looking to make their first ever grand final with a win over Clarence. The match will be played on Sunday before the Roos Saints AFLW clash. In the NPL, Gnorki is looking to head into the postseason in winning form. The Knights have won just one of their last four and face, a lo face losing a home final if the results don't go their way. They're hoping to bounce back into form against Clarence later tonight coming closer to what would be a semi-final either against you know whether it's South Hobart or Devonport it's important that we're st is still playing well now. In the Women's Super League a strong finish to the season will be front of mind for Kingborough when it also faces the Zebras tonight. It's good to, to try and end the season on a high and yeah certainly um, I think that opportunity to step up in the fourth is, is a big one for the for the girls. Kickoff is at 8.15. And Stuart McSwain has had an unfortunate stroke of luck at the Diamond League in Switzerland. McSwain out in front from the majority of the race but found himself swallowed up as he approached the final bend. The USA's Yared Magoose won the race in 3 minutes and 30 seconds. McSwain finishing 7th with a time of 3 minutes and 31.92. Good evening, what a great day. Friday and the first day of spring. Hobart and Devonport 14 degrees, Launceston and Burnie 15. Temperatures looked a bit on the cool side but were close to average. King Island, Low Heads and Helens and Bushy Park all 15. Flinders Island, Friendly Beaches and Strawn 14 today. Areas of cloud over western and southern Tasmania but clear sunny skies over the east and north for the most part. More cloud gathered over Victoria, the New South Wales coast and southern South Australia. The rest of the nation pretty clear. Tomorrow a high moves over us and through to the southeast, a trough lies over Queensland and a cold front approaches Western Australia. We'll have northeast and northwesterly winds at just 5 to 15 knots and even lighter over the lakes tomorrow, swells at 3 metres in western and southern waters. Hobart for Saturday, 16 and partly cloudy. Fine for Medina, a bit of cloud, 15 the top, minus one overnight for Oatlands, a frosty start but 14 later. 16 for Launceston and partly cloudy, 14 the top for Devonport, minus two for Liawini, a high of 11 degrees. Burnie partly cloudy and 14, 14 for Strawn, Marrowar cloudy and 14 degrees. No rain anywhere yet, this is great. Sunny for the east as well, St Helens 16 along with Swansea, Orford mostly sunny and 17 degrees. Now to Sunday and promises of more fine, mostly sunny weather. Yep, lock it in. But on Monday, a few showers should develop over the north and west before extending statewide in the evening. And showers on into Tuesday, a windy day too, and snow to 800 metres. Showers increasing over Perth. Sunny weather for Adelaide and Melbourne. Minus two to kick things off in Canberra. Fine and partly cloudy weather for Sydney and Brisbane. Partly cloudy over Hobart as well, 9 at the moment. 10 in Launceston, mostly clear in Devonport and 9 degrees. I think before the break you were trying to bait me a little bit there, Kim Miller. I'm not biting, but I will wish you a happy weekend. You too. Thanks, Murph.